Aloha folks, uh, this is uh, Hajim Zero here, back with another um, TV review, this one's the Boondock Season 2, and uh, I'm going to try to be real quick about this, because I think my stomach is acting up now, so I'm, I'm, you can probably fill in the blank of what's going to happen next, but uh, with this season, um, again it's the same cast, you know, uh, and creator Aaron Magruder, uh, Regina King, John Witherspoon, uh, and um, Cedric Yarbrough. I might be saying that name wrong, but the name is coming to me now. And I can't remember the other dude's name. It was like Gary something. Uh, but um, the improvements of this season, I think, was the shading and, and lighting they used on some of the characters and um, some of the stories that got a little bit in more depth. Uh, every character the main cast pretty much had their own episode moments pretty much like with season one but i think it was much more heavier here on in season two you know i would say each character like riley huey granddad and ruckus and even uh tom they had a possibly like two good episode shining moments or they were used a, a lot more um pretty much uh this season, I think that's when, I know this one in three was at its, at its high point. You know, um, I don't know what the ratings were, but I know a lot of people who I talked to in the animation department or who like animation in general, they knew what the Boondocks was and then they had watched it. And, uh, and again, I know a lot of people, even some of the Asians had watched it, who I talked to, some of the Latinos. So it hit many many different cultures. Some of the Middle Easterns, you know, one of my close friends at work had watched this. He we were quoting the lines all day. Um this one had a little bit more of the guest uh star appearances. Of course, um the three main ones I can think of that came back frequently a little bit more in this season was uh was um Charlie Murphy, Samuel Jackson and uh what's that other dude's name? I completely forgot now. Uh it's gonna come to me in a second. Just give me a second. It was him, him, y'all, bro. Freak! I can't remember. A little top of my head. But uh, there were some new ones. I know Monique was in one episode. Most Def came back. Um, I think Buster Rhymes and Snoop Dogg. And uh, I think CeeLo Green. Yeah, yeah, CeeLo Green was in this season. And the funny thing, one of the episodes he was on... It's actually two. They were banned. It was two B B E T episodes. They were only on the DVD. They might have aired it in Canada, but yeah, they were banned because they were they were poking fun heavily at the at the B E T station, and they got a lot of info on them because one of the execs, I believe, works on the show. Or I could be wrong, but I, I know someone from B E T was working on the show at one point, and he was giving them information about it. Because the satire of two of the episodes was that B that BET was evil, and and it was kind of funny because ironically now, you know, I ain't gonna get to the whole discussion about highly intellectual people who may have not watched BET anymore, or hell or hell even MTV because it's not even about the music anymore, it's just a bunch of BS that you know no one really likes. Um. I think uh, one of the, uh, the major characters that were notice noticeable that had returned was uh, Colonel H. Stinkmeter, the um, the the blind hate dude, uh, and he comes back and possesses Tom in one episode, and it was just hilarious. You know, they had all their kung fu moments, and they had the, the Exorcist, um, you know, reference with Uncle Ruckus, and of course him being tied to the bed, and uh, there was some other uh, pop media, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, pop media reference, um, they reference Mortal Kombat and, and, and Bloodsport in one episode when Granddad gets that crazy chick to come to their house, um, trying to think of some more, uh, this is funny, I haven't watched, I haven't rewatched this yet, I was lucky with the last season that I watched all the episodes, but um, there are some that are coming to me. They made a they mocked Soul Plane in the beginning of the episode and talked about you know stealing movies and all that. 
which a lot of people were doing at the time, and I see why they had put that out. You know, don't steal movies and it's piracy. Uh, they possibly did a few Star Wars references too. I know they did last season, but I know after a while it became more heavy. I think Yoda actually appears and whatnot. But um, so far, going back to the technical stuff, their their animation had got a lot better, um, especially with the the skin tones and the shadowing, uh, and even some of the fight scenes that got a little bit better. Uh, I know um, Aaron McGruder has stated that he was a fan of Samurai Shampoo and Cowboy Bebop. And they were both good animes, and I even, you know, I saw the episodes of both series, including the Cowboy Bebop movie, which I also previously reviewed. And uh, I can tell when they definitely use it, even, you know, hell, you know, uh, Huey's hair even looks like Mugen's a little bit, um, and even the way it flows. And uh, it was just nice to notice those little small things, especially when he has a sword and, he, and he's fighting in one nine, and it's just a cool thing to see. Um, yeah, pretty much that's the only thing I, I can think of on the top of my head. I'm still thinking about who that guest, the third returning guest character was. It was Charlie Murphy, Samuel Jackson, and, um, it's probably going to hit me when I watch the episode. I'm really going to be mad when I figure it out. Because they're the two that appear the, or were, you know, used the most. Man, I know it's somebody else. It's a third person. Oh well. Um, <laughs> see you in the next review, uh, which is season three. Um, watch one of you guys put in the comment section who it was because I couldn't think of it at the time. But uh, talk to you later. Uh, peace.